Hey guys, John Rettinger here with round two of the PSP Go versus the iPhone 3GS or iPod Touch. In the first round, we covered games and we covered screen technology and screen hardware resolution. Now in this round, we're going to cover video playback, we're gonna cover audio playback, and we're gonna cover picture viewing. So some of you might be thinking, what do these devices have in common and why would they be going head to head? Well, I think that Sony and Apple are competing for a very similar demographic here. Both devices tout media playbacks. Both devices play games, although PSP definitely is a dedicated gaming machine and has a bigger, full version, more expensive library, whereas the iPhone has more inexpensive, cheaper games that you find in the App Store. But games aside, media playback, web browsing, and picture viewing, they all do the same thing, so I think it's worthy of a comparison. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to check out is video playback on the PSP Go. Now I tried to load my own video content on the PSP Go via USB. I tried MP4, I tried MOV, and I tried Windows Media Files, none of which seemed to transfer or play. So the only way I was able to get video onto the PSP was actually downloading a trailer for a game from the PlayStation Store. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. You can see what video looks like. I'm not going to get into screen resolution again. We're going to go just based on what it looks like to you. So here's video. There's the game trailer. So this is a trailer for the Gran Turismo series. You can see video is very crisp, it's very clear, the brightness is turned down a little bit so it shows up on camera, but it is amazingly clear. And the audio that comes out through the stereo speakers is actually pretty good. So I'll go ahead and pause that. Moral being, you could very easily download or rent a movie from the PlayStation Store, watch it on an airplane, and have a great viewing experience. The screen is gorgeous, it's bright, it's high enough resolution that you don't notice any pixelation. It looks good. However, getting media on it that's not from the PlayStation Store looks like it could be a little bit difficult, at least for my experience. So video on the iPhone certainly can come from the iTunes Store, or you can put your own converted video on. So let's go ahead and play a video that I've got on here. Go to iPod, and we've got some videos. I've got the first season of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Great show. We'll watch just a couple second clips, I don't get into any copyright issues, just so you can see what video looks like on the iPhone. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. You can sort of zoom in, zoom out, stereo speaker. Anyway, it looks great. Those of you that have seen video on an iPhone or an iPod Touch, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Video quality is absolutely fantastic on both devices. As far as the video quality playback, I think it's got to be a draw. I was fully prepared though to give the PlayStation the edge for a more open platform, being able to play more video files, but I just wasn't able to get them to play. So if you can deal with video from the PlayStation Store versus video from the iTunes Store, you know, you really can't go wrong either way, and both will download video wirelessly, which is great. So next, let's move on to music, since both have pretty nice music players. So you're probably not familiar with how the PlayStation Go, or the PSP Go rather, plays music. So I'll go over to music, and I've got just one song stored on here, The Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day, and again, we'll just play it for a very short time so you don't get into copyright issues, but you can hear what it sounds like and what the interface looks like when it's playing music. You can close it. You can see the little bar down there letting you know how much you listen to. You open it up, restarts it. You got your general pause, fast forward controls. You can use this to go forward or back in tracks. If there were album art, it would show up right there, but there really isn't any sort of, obviously, flick scrolling since it's not a touch screen. You're relying only on the navigation down here. Moral being, if you just want to play music, it works very well. It's not the most visually appealing thing. It's not a lot of eye candy, but it is functional and it definitely works. So let's take a look at music playback on the iPhone and iPod Touch. At the core of these things, these are iPods, so you'd expect them to definitely have a little bit of an edge. So we'll open up iPod. Here's video, we'll go back to artists. So not that much on here. My little cousin likes to dance to Beyonce songs, so I put them on there in some Green Day. So if you turn the device, it does have an accelerometer, you can scroll through the album art. So I go ahead and just click it. 
you get sort of a graphical representation of the songs. You go ahead and hit play on any of them. Put the device back up in landscape. Or in portrait, rather. You get the album art and the controls right on the screen that most people are probably familiar with. And your scrubber right across that. Since it is a touch screen, you can scrub as far ahead or as back as you'd like. So I think probably to no one's surprise, the iPhone and iPod Touch definitely take the edge as far as music playback goes. Apple's got this nailed. Formats are a little bit limited to either AAC+, Plus, which is the DRM encrypted music that comes from, uh, comes from iTunes, but you can now download non-encrypted AAC files. And you can also convert your CDs or WMVs, whatever you have, to play. So it really has become a much more open platform. So I think this is dead. has definitely got to go with the iPhone or iPod Touch. So next, let's check out picture viewing. Now I've loaded a few pictures here on the place PSP Go. I keep saying PlayStation. So I'll go to pictures. This does not have a camera, but you can import pictures very easily. Here's a picture you guys probably are mostly familiar with. Take a second to load. Oh, there's a picture of, uh, of my car. This is the one you guys are probably all familiar with. This is the one that I've got for, for my banner on YouTube. So there's not really that much you can do. You get some controls for pictures. You can set a slideshow. You can view next. You can scroll. You can rotate the picture to the left or the right. You can do a little bit of zooming in, a little bit of zooming out. You can send it off if you've got a set up to an email account, which is actually a pretty nice feature. You can set it as your wallpaper. You can view it in widescreen mode if you'd like and how you're going to uh, display it. If you want to put this on a, on a TV or something, connect it, have it show up. So it's pretty rudimentary picture viewer. It does work and you know it works well. If you want to go to the next one, you, know, you can just tap the shoulder button and it'll load the next one. It does take some time to uh, load and it doesn't always show up. So it took probably about a second or so to, uh, to load up there. But if you just want to look at some pictures, you can do it. And if you want to set it up as a gallery or an albums, you have to actually import it as an album. There's no way to really manage your pictures uh, when you're on here. But it's, again, it's definitely functional and it will work and it's a decent way for you to view your pictures. I think picture viewing is one time when I really wished that this was a touch screen. It'd be a lot easier to, you know, pinch and zoom or at least hit the plus button to zoom in, zoom out. Definitely using the controls can get to be a little bit cumbersome. So picture viewing on the iPhone or iPod Touch should be something that's familiar to everybody. So I'm going to open up my photos here and let me find something that's non-incriminating. Let's find a good picture here. All right. There is a picture of my baby niece reading a book. And when you're viewing pictures, you can scroll left or right. There's got a video of her. It's very smooth. And if you want to zoom in, it's all touch, uh, touch controls using advantage of the multi-touch capabilities. Two fingers in, two fingers out, move around, double tap, zooms you right back out. Certainly, and I think to no one's surprise, viewing pictures on the iPhone and iPod Touch definitely wins over the PSP Go. Not much of a shocker there. The iPhone's been doing this for quite a while, and the touchscreen clearly gives it an edge. So next, let's take a look at the browser, since both have browser capabilities. So we'll exit out of here, and we will go to Browser. Get this in focus. Internet browser. We'll let it load up. And this is using a modified version of Opera, uh, I should mention. So load a site that's perhaps in the history. So I've got Techno Buffalo and ESPN.com. Let's load up ESPN and uh, check how long it takes. So it's on a relatively fast Wi-Fi network. So it'll load up. And now it will pull in ESPN. I'll let you guys sort of see the, the time on this. And this does have Wi-Fi B and G built in. So it's loading ESPN. It's not loading the mobile version. It's loading the full-fledged big old ESPN.com. So navigation is done with the analog stick. You can sort of move around and navigate on the screen, but if you want to move the page down, you got to actually use the arrows. It's not that quick, it's not that fluid, but for viewing a sort of a website on the go, it'll get the job done. 
Certainly there's no, no multi-touch capabilities. All your menuing is done from the menu down below that I showed you. But you know, you can view it. You know, it does, it does work. It's not necessarily gonna be able to handle all your flash content, unfortunately, but it's probably to be expected for a mobile browser. If you're viewing a site a little more simple, then a web browser is going to work for you. But I would not rely, this, rely on this as a primary web browser. So let's push this off to the side. This is sort of a very quick overview and comparisons. So we'll go to uh, Safari. I've got my YouTube channel up here. Let's load up the same ESPN.com. This is not meant to be a speed test, so I'm not going to clear the cache, clear the memory. I just want to show you what the sites look like. So we'll load up ESPN. This does load up the mobile version. Let's load up the full-fledged non-mobile version for uh, comparisons. And ESPN had been loaded on that PS uh, PlayStation uh, before the PSP Go, and had certainly been loaded on the iPhone 3GS, but it was noticeably quicker. Now for navigation, you can turn it into landscape mode and take advantage of the accelerometer. Zooming is much smoother, and viewing pages is just a, a little bit of a better experience. Much, much, much smoother, and it's all done with your finger. So certainly, I think to no one's surprise here, the iPhone and the iPod Touch definitely take the edge. So in this round of PSP Go versus iPhone or iPod Touch, clear winner for the iPhone or iPod Touch with the one exception of video, and both play back great video. At the end of the day, you're gonna get a PlayStation Go for the games. These are sort of secondary features. So check out the game categories and the game libraries and see which one's best for you. If you want the full-fledged, high graphic games, PSP Go is a great way to go. If you want sort of the small mini games, the games in the App Store are fantastic. There are some little games in the PSP Go, the PSP Minis that I demonstrated in a previous video, but there aren't quite as many as there are on the iPhone App Store. So at the end of the day, the decision is going to be yours. For exclusive content, guys, check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash john 4 lakers And to learn more about Techno Buffalo, check out technobuffalo.com. Video links will be in the sidebar. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.